Hello, this is Mrs. Condry, and this is Integumentary Disorders, Our Objectives. I will describe health promotion practices related to the integumentary system, and will describe assessment findings inter and interventions for those experiencing acute problems, malignant and non-malignant disorders, bacterial, viral, infection, and fungal infections, and will describe the appropriate diagnostic surgical therapy nursing management. <clears throat> so let's first go to health promotion, environmental hazards on the skin. This is a picture of my grandson um, with his hat on, although he doesn't have sunglasses because he kept ripping them off. But the recommendation is that we wear wide brimmed hats and sunglasses in the sun because it can also cause cataracts to our eyes um, from sun exposure. So sun exposure is cumulative, it does cause premature aging, and it causes precancerous and cancerous lesions. So we need to try to avoid direct sunlight with no tanning boost. It is very difficult though in Florida to live in this place without getting um, without being in the sun so we wear we can wear sunblock and we can protect ourselves with hats and sunglasses so this sunscreen recommendation is FPF 15 every day and reapply every two hours and after swimming uh, that's for every day <laughs> if you go out first like the beach the pool it should be at least S SPF 30 and SPF 30 for those who have a history of skin cancer or a history of skin sensitivity, the, say the people with red hair and fair, fair skin. We also should teach the importance of rest and sleep, um, teach the uh, people to exercise, use have good hygiene with mild moisturizing soaps and good well-balanced nutrition. And we also should teach patients to follow instructions on those over-the-counter products um, and see the, the health care provider for any worsening of skin problems. Skin cancer is the most common malignant condition. And uh, risk factors are fair skin, family history, indoor tanning, and chronic sun exposure. Dark skinned people have less, are less susceptible to skin cancer, but they can develop melanoma on their palms, their soles, and their mucous membranes. And African Americans and Asians are more likely to develop a keloid after an injury. So this is a keloid, and it's scar tissue that bu bu builds up and overgrows. These are the A, B, C, D, E's of melanoma. We need to teach good self-examination. And this is uh, put out by the government that um, A, we check for asymmetry, that lesions are normally symmetrical. And this is asymmetrical. So a mole is usually just plain round, um, but then this is, um, asymmetrical and then the border of the lesions should appear smooth and this is not smooth and see the color of the lesions should stay about the same and this has oh, dark and also uh, some red on the edges the diameter we have to note for growing or changing sizes and the evolution it should not be changing in appearance and growing Non-melanoma skin cancers are the most common type of skin cancers, and there's three types. The first is um, actinic keratosis, and that's a precancerous condition um, from sun exposure, and it can have varied appearance. And this is an actually uh, this actinic keratosis, and this is a horn. It's a varied appearance. It usually is irregularly shaped, flat, hard. It can have a hard scale and it can have this horn. 
and it would be on areas that are exposed to the sun. And the, a biopsy is usually done to see if it, it, it's cancerous or precancerous. Um, Non-melanoma skin cancers also include basal cell cancer. It's the most common type of skin cancer. Um, it is actual cancer, whereas this actinic keratosis is precancerous. This is an actual cancer. It's the least deadliest, and it's um, over 90% cure rate. It's often on the nose. It's common in middle to older adults from sun exposure, and it's pigmented with curled borders, opaque appearance, and it it could be misinterpreted as a melanoma. Now, the treatment depends on the location and the lesion. Um, so usually they do take off the, the actual cancer to send for biopsy. And if, it's, if they find that it is basal cell, sometimes they have to go back and cut a little, a little bit more of the edges. This is squamous cell. It is malignant. It's less common, and it can be highly aggressive. Smoking can contribute to the formation on mouth and lips, and um, immunosuppression greatly increases the risk. So that would depend if you're taking a drug to suppress your um, immune system for, say, a, a transplant, organ transplant. A biopsy must be done and the treatment is varied. Um, please see page 412 for it. Malignant melanoma is the most deadly skin cancer. It has the potential to metastasize to any organ. Um, the cause is really unknown and it's most likely a combination of environment and genetics. It has an irregular color it has surface and it has um, irregular border. So see the difference between this benign uh, tumor and this malignant tumor. This is irregular. It's dark um, black. They, the dermatologists never like black um, for for surface for skin cancers, and it has an irregular border. So the risks are uh, UV exposure from a tanning bed or persons with fair skin and eyes. And again, it can be genetic. And the care is usually wide excision. So they would not just cut this or edge. They would cut way around it. And if it's big enough and deep enough, they might have to do a skin graft. If it spreads to the lymph nodes, they have to do chemotherapy or radiation or biological therapy or immunotherapy to boost the immune system. Now we turn to skin infections. Um, this is these skin infections are lesions that are from a variety of factors. It can be staph aureus. It can be streptococcus. This picture here is a MRSA infection of a cutaneous abscess. This is from the CDC. Uh, predisposing factors are moisture, obesity, skin, other skin diseases, and systemic diseases such as diabetes. Diabetes puts you at risk um, for infections. You're less you're not able to fight the infections as well. And if you're taking systemic corticosteroids, um, and antibiotics that can actually put you at risk for a skin infection. There are different infections. It, it can be the sources can be bacterial, viral, fungal, or an infestation of, say, um, lice. So bacterial is impetigo, folliculitis, Fernicle, carbuncle, and cellulitis, and this is a carbuncle. A viral can be a herpes simplex virus, herpes zoster, or warts. Um, fungal is candidus, and skin infections, I have the picture here of lice. So impetigo is a superficial skin infection. It's um, usually from staphylococcus or um, group A beta hemolytic streptococcus. 
It's quite common in children. Occasionally it does affect an adult. The um, clinical manifestations are that it has these pustule-like lesions and it has these moist honey-colored crusts surrounded by redness. Um, and it can be from poor skin uh, digging around in the dirt. When I was a kid, I got impetigo because I was always in the dirt and I didn't wash my hands very often. So it can be from poor um, hygiene. Topical treatment includes warm saline soaks followed by soap and water to remove that crust. Um, the your peri, your pediatric book lists a 1 to 20 burrow solution, which is an over-the-counter astringent to soften that crust. Um, and also you can put a topical antibiotic cream such as um, Bacterban on it. If it's very extensive, they would have to get oral or parental antibiotics, usually penicillins. So the nursing interventions is to keep the area uh, te to teach to keep the area clean and dry, to teach good hand washing to prevent its spreading, and to ensure compliance with the antibiotics. Cellulitis uh, you see more common in the elderly. It can also be from say a cat scratching uh, somebody. Um, some kind of a bite it tur can turn into cellulitis. It's uh, subcutaneous tissues that are all inflamed. It's often following a break in the skin. So maybe they uh, scratch themselves uh, outside on um, something and then they scratch it with their fingernails and they spread bacteria into it. And in children, um, facial cellulitis can result from an ear infection. So the manifestations are hot, tender skin, and intense redness, swelling. They can get a fever if, if it's not uh, treated. Uh, usually it takes some time for a fever to come. And pitting edema. So see the difference between this leg and this leg. It's obvious that this is a cellulitis. But the patient should not have let it get this severe before they went to the doctors. The treatment is moist heat to elevate and immobilize that affected extremity, and they would get oral or parental antibiotics depending on how severe it is. And uh, it, they, the severe infections can require IV antibiotics. This is um, virus infection of the skin called herpes simplex. The type 1 occurs on the mouth or the lips in these grouped vesicles and we, we can call them cold sores, we can call them uh, sunspots. But herpes simplex type 2 is grouped vesicles on the genital, genitals or rectum causing this intense burning, itching, and pain. Both these viruses are exacerbated by sunlight, trauma, um, having women having their periods, and stress. And it is transmitted by respiratory droplets or virus-containing fluid. And herpes simplex 1 can be transferred to the genitals with oral sex. If someone has uh, a break on their, or a break out is what I should say, on their mouth and they perform oral sex, it can be spread to the um, genitals. It is a lifelong infection. Uh, oftentimes the patient has to go on suppressive therapy with an antiviral if it continues to occur. Uh, the treatment is soothing moist compress. It can have, you can put white petroleum jelly or lip balm to an oral lesion, no sex during the breakouts. There's no cure. And um, for the type one, we can teach to prevent outbreaks on the lip by wearing sunscreen. And these are the medications, the oral antiviral agents um, are uh, acyclovir, and famciclovir, 
and valacyclovir, which is Valtrex. Uh, Valtrex is a longer acting uh, drug that usually only has to be given twice a day versus acyclovir is usually six um, every six hours, so four times a day. And those drugs um, work well to treat um, herpes. But it, again, it is a lifelong infection. Varicella virus is chickenpox. It's highly contagious. It's less common now because we're, we have a vaccine, but kids still might have breakthrough varicella. And you see these um, vesicles seen on the face, the scalp, the trunk, the extremities. It's self-limiting in children, although it can last a week or two, but in adults, they can get pneumonia and cephalitis and it can be very severe. So the treatment is oral acyclovir or famcyclovir and we need to control the secondary infections. Children usually just get uh, antipyretics and, my, and a mild antihistamine for itching. So they would probably just get acetaminophen, not aspirin, and they may get um, a light dose of, of diphenhydramine or Benadryl for the itching. And then also keep the child cool because um, the heat increases the itching. Now there's this myth that if scratching makes scars, um, but my child got it at only five months, I think. He couldn't scratch himself. And he has scars to this day from the chicken pox. So um, I don't believe that myth that you have to stop the scratching so they won't scar because they can still scar even without um, it scratching it. Herpes zoster is shingles. And this is a picture of shingles. Uh, it's caused by that same virus that can cause varicella, which is chicken pox. It it's comes back. Um, it comes back when you're immunocompromised or you're stressed. Um, and it goes, it follows this path along a spinal nerve pathway. So this is very common to go across the back. Um, it can also go down uh, any meridian um, any spinal nerve pathway. So it will follow along the track. And it's really painful, um, burning pain, tingling, and itching. And they can have post-herpatic neuralgia pain for months after an outbreak. So if the patient recognizes that there is something wrong, if they get to the doctors within a few days and they can go on one of the antiviral drugs, it will help prevent them from getting this post-herpatic neuralgia pain, but it will, um, and it will also decrease the length of this infection, the length of time. It is contagious, so if anyone has shingles that are open, they have to go on precautions, say if they're a patient in the hospital, and also they can't work if they're if they're um, still working they cannot work there are uh, there's a vaccine now for people over 50 um, to get which I have now passed that landmark but I hesitate to get it because it, the effectiveness I think is only around five years so if I get it now it might not be effective when I really need it as I age. So I've been holding off. But I actually did get uh, shingles when I was up for like a week and a week with my son who had an ear infection and wasn't getting tr treated properly. He would scream all night. For, it was like five nights in a row and I ended up getting shingles. So I had to stay home from work and um, I don't think I was treated because it, I had waited too long um, to get the antiviral. 
So it does happen even in younger people when they're really stressed. The treatment is warm, mo moist compresses, um, analgesics such as acetaminophen, the antiviral agents uh, acyclovir and famcyclovir. Uh, well, they can also get silvadine to those ruptured vesicles, but I would use gloves to put it on because that um, those secretions are infectious. Gabapentin can be ordered for post herpetic neuralgia. That is a, a, a medication that can control um, pain from um, nerve pain. And you can, it can also have white petroleum jelly applied to it. And here's the information, the Zostavac vaccine for adults over 50. And like I said, if they're hospitalized, they have to have contact precautions. Candidus is pretty common. Um, in any age group, it can, it's caused by the Candida albicans um, fungal infection. It grows in moist, warm areas such as the groin uh, for those patients who have uh, a larger amount of flesh that, that hangs over the groin and never dries out uh, or under our breasts or in the mouth. The mouth it can often occur with infants and it can occur with people who are on um, antibiotics because it overtakes taking giving taking the antibiotic um, this fungus can overtake and overgrow because it kills the good bacteria so that's why often patients are uh, they are recommended to take a probiotic to prevent a yeast infection from occurring so in the mouth, it resembles white cheesy plaque uh, or resembles milk curds. In the vagina, it also is like um, white cheesy discharge. And on the skin, it's a very red, blotchy. Some, uh, the, the rash is so extreme that some of the dots are blending into the other but this is a terrible uh, diaper rash it, the skin was too moist the diaper stayed on too long and it was too wet on this child the treatment is nystatin ointment or powder which is an antifungal it, it can they can also take azole antifungals fluconazole ketoconazole uh, they can you can take vaginal suppositories or mycostatin powder. Uh, skin hygiene is important to keep the skin dry to prevent it from coming back. Um, other fungal infections include um, jock itch and athlete's foot and. It, the jock itch is, a, itch is a scaly plaque in the groin area. The treatment is a topical anti-fungal uh, cream or lotion and the athlete's foot, it has um, scaling and maceration between the toes. Again, the treatment is topical anti-fungal cream, a spray, powder, anything to keep it dry. Uh, another fungal infection is ringworm tinea corporis. This has um, ring-like appearances with well-defined margins on these um, bumps, not bumps, they're actual look like rings. It's uh, very scaly and red and it's usually from infected pets. So a pet can have an infection and then you're petting the, your, your dog and you could get a ringworm. It also can be spread from family member to family member. So it's important not to share towels or green, green, grooming items with other family members. The treatment is a cool compress, topical creams or antifungals. Lice, pediculosis, is common in child care centers and schools. It used to be that if 
a one child got lice, they would tell all the classmates or they would send a note home to the parents to say, hey, watch for um, skin the lice. They don't do that anymore. So your child may have been playing with a child who ends up with lice and you don't know about it. So you it can keep spreading because it's a privacy thing. So the uh, it's common to see these little white flecks in the hair. This, those are nits, and it, it is itchy, and um, they may get in a secondary infection because they're scratching so much. So the treatment is to remove them from school until until it's cured, and to apply topical. Um, medication, which I think, no, it's not on here, uh, topical medication, and after they, they have to follow the instructions on it, and then they remove the, they have to comb the hair to get rid of the nits. And also, it's very important to wash all the bed linens, the clothes, and everything in hot water and non-washable items should be sealed in a plastic bag for 14 days to suffocate the lice. And it's also important not to share combs, hats, anything um, that uh, the lice could be on. It's a lot of work to cure lice. Um, it, it's a big process because you have to wash everything. Scabies is another uh, skin infection. It's from mites. It takes between uh, 30 to 60 days between infestation and actual physical symptoms. So the problem is it could be you could be giving it to other family members because someone didn't know. But the clinical manifestations are this generalized red rash, uh, vascular vesicular formation or burrows. So here's the one with the burrows. So the mite is actually burrowing under the skin. And this is um, the red rash. And nocturnal intense itching is a classic symptoms. And the rash will keep increasing. So this is the treatment. Um, Elamite topical lotion is the treatment of choice. And then it's uh, important to launder all the clothes and the linens with hot water. The book said to uh, bleach everything. Well, you can't bleach everything in your house. So I looked it up, and this is per the American Academy of Dermatology. They just said to wash everything with hot water and to vacuum the entire house and, of course, to treat all family members. And anyone that comes in the hospital with scabies or uh, lice, they are automatically placed on precautions. Ticks are another skin infestation um, that can cause something called Lyme's disease. This tick uh, enters the skin in the bloodstream through saliva and feces from of the ticks. And so we do, even though it's not as common here in Florida, we do get ticks and we do have Lyme's disease. It's just not as recognized, so the symptoms progress. Often there's a ring-like rash three to four weeks after the bite, but someone might not have it. Um, the treatment is oral antibiotics, doxycycline and tetracycline, and IV antibiotics if it's very pro if it's progressed, they may have um, arthritic changes, neurological changes, and cardiac symptom, um, and it can progress. So then they may get IV antibiotics, and also they need to rest and eat a healthy diet and education regarding prevention is much better than getting Lyme's disease. Um, wear long pants when walking in the woods and, and that kind of thing. Well, also, I have a video on Lyme's disease because it's very, very interesting. It's a short 
YouTube video. Contact dermatitis is an eruption of the skin related to contact with irritating substances or allergens like poison ivy or um, I'm also allergic to not only poison ivy but the sap from mangoes is a cousin to poison ivy so I picked a whole mess of mangoes and held them against my chest and then got this really bad rash on my chest um, the clinical manifestations are acute red papules and plaques and it's very itchy the management is to identify and remove those causative uh, agents and to apply topical or oral corticosteroids you can take antihistamines like diphenhydramine uh, lubricate the skin if there's um, the honey a honey rash wash it and remove that honey uh, colored drainage and if it's very very severe they might need systemic corticosteroids A drug reaction can be caused by uh, any drug, and uh, the rash, rashes are the most common reaction. It's a, a, usually an abrupt onset. It can happen even one day, two days after the, the antibiotic is finished or the drug is finished because it's still in our system. It still has a half-life. If... Uh, we know, like, say they're only taking one drug and then they stop it and then the and the rash comes, or they just started a new drug and then the rash comes, then we can take the drug, withdraw that drug if possible, and they should take antibiotic or antihistamines. And again, if it's very severe, they may need a corticosteroid. If it's a really severe reaction, they may need to wear a uh, identification bracelet. These are benign conditions of the skin now which is um, acne. We're all familiar with how acne looks. Uh, it's an inflammatory disorder of the sebaceous glands. It's usually just in adults but it happens uh, even with women as we age the different hormones. Um, the uh, treatment is to cleanse it apply topical uh, benzoyl peroxide or antimicrobials. Uh, topical retinoids are also good if it's a little bit more severe. And then Accutane is a drug, that's the brand name, that can be ordered for severe cystic acne. However, it is contraindicated in pregnant women or women intending to get pregnant. And also they need to monitor their lung uh, liver function. Psoriasis is another common benign condition of the skin. And this is uh, typical uh, silvery white scales uh, on the temple. It can be anywhere on the body, often on like an elbow, knees. Um, it involves excessively rapid turnover of epidural cells. And the treatment is topical corticosteroids and even tar preparations, retinoids, Remicade, um, ultraviolet light is also a treatment. It can occur in infants through all ages. And it's really important to keep the skin moist to prevent itching because a lot of times people will just keep scratching it. There's a commercial right now, uh, I think it's on Remicade um, to uh, help control psoriasis and that's when it's much more severe. Topical lubricants can include um, Aquaphor, Cetaphil, and Eucerin. Those are all over-the-counter uh, lubricants. They shouldn't use anything that has perfume, like the Bed and Bath and, be and Beyond things. Uh, they, uh, they need to use more natural things. So the collaborative care for dermatological problems there's topical therapy that I've talked about, um, ph phototherapy, radiation therapy, laser, laser technology, and then I'll really talk more about the drug therapy in pharmacology.
So now I want to go to diagnostic and surgical therapy. There is skin scraping for diagnosis. Uh, there's electro desiccation, electro coagulation. Um, they can do a punch biopsy, cryosurgery, so that's freezing. That can often is done with warts. And there's uh, excision with Mohs surgery. That is a surgery where they um, say they think it's basal cell. It, it's basal cell or squamous cell. They go in and excise the, uh, the lesion, send it to the lab and have a, them look under a microscope to make sure they have all the cells. And if they don't, they go back in and scrape more skin out of that area. So that's Mohs procedure. Ambulatory and home care, we should advise the client regarding the care of their disorders with um, either wet dressings, baths, dressing changes, or topical medications. We're going to control their itching, prevent the spread, prevent secondary infections, and it needs to be specific to whatever infection they have. There are some psychological effects from uh, different skin lesions. So say you have skin cancer on your nose and they have to cut off the end of your nose. They may have to do a skin graft from your leg and put it onto your nose and now you have hair growing out the end of your nose. Or you could have severe psoriasis. The commercial is talking about how this woman, was, uh, she has like a coat on and it's really hot out and she's got a coat on because she's trying to hide her psoriasis. So it can um, really cause some um, emotional issues. So there can be support groups. They can camouflage the area. You can use different makeups um, and make sure that the patient is following the prescribed regimen. And we need to provide emotional support for chronic uh, skin disorders. So in summary, our nurses play a vital role in caring for these patients with skin disorders. And we're going to assess. Uh, we're going to be mindful of the older client and the impact of the aging process. Again, because older clients have less collagen and are more susceptible to skin breakdowns and um, may not be able to see if they have a rash, a scabies rash. Um, they may not be able to clean their house properly. We need to plan and implement specific interventions and perform client teaching and monitor and prevent the risk of complications. And that's the end of integumentary disorders.